Okay, folks, in this lesson, we're going to be uh, working on this piece here. As you can see, these small cubes are kind of creating our cube. Let's go ahead and work on that. Um, first of all, if I come out of my camera, uh, the uh, cube in question is cube number, I think it was 20, I guess. Yeah, cube number 20, and I've imported uh, basically another uh, uh, piece of these small cubes, as you can see, just some uh, small cubes into a fracture object, and they are exactly uh, centered with our cube number 20, as you can see, 195, negative 195, and 195. I'm just going to select this guy and hold on Alt and add a null. And let's go ahead and Control C the name and copy the name to the null here. And I'm going to put this null uh, to be a child of the cube number 20, okay? We might be, if uh, our setup breaks, if our uh, Rubik's uh, basically movements break, we might need to change this parenting system to uh, a constraint tag system. But for the moment, let's see how that's going to work out. So here is our uh, null, and uh, we can go ahead and work on the uh, fracture object and see how exactly it happens. Now, if I go ahead and get back to my camera, we can go ahead and actually hide the cube number 20 and uh, make sure the uh, cube, the small cubes and the fracture objects are kind of uh, visible. Let's get back to our camera. And if I move this thing, there we go. Here we need to kind of animate this thing. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to be very simple. Let's go ahead and quickly add a basic. Um, let's go. So I'm going to my MoGraph effector. I'm going to uh, just create a plane effector and let's go ahead and put this thing uh, in here let's go ahead and close this guy and this one too okay now we have this plane effector let's go ahead and actually uh, move it in, in a right place so let's go ahead and get out of here as you can see right now if I select this plane effector let me kind of move it and let's go ahead and change its uh, Select this plane effector, change the falloff again to linear, and this is what we have. Great. Let's go ahead and move this thing and see what exactly we want to do. Now, if I get back to the camera, you can see we have this falloff and we can work it out. Let's go ahead and kind of maybe move it a bit. It doesn't really matter that much. We're just going to uh, work on it. So, let's go ahead, go to our plane effector. I'm going to the parameters and I'm going to zero out the uh, Y and I'm going to move it on X, so like this. Okay, and if I go ahead and uh, move this, you see this is what we got at the moment. Let me go to change my plane and change its orientation to, if I go to plus X, it's going to be. Um, I guess plus Z is the best case in this. Let's see, maybe negative Z. Uh, so that's what we're going to get at the moment. You know, kind of uh, close to what we want. Let's go ahead and uh, work on it. I'm going to, first of all, make the parameter enable the scale, uniform scale, and make sure it's negative 1. OK. So as we move them, you can see they kind of come into play. And I really, uh, as you can see in the design, get back here a bit. You can see these cubes are really random and they, uh, you know, fill the places uh, not in a really uh, regular way. Uh, they are really, uh, as you can see, irregularly basically uh, come into their places. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in order to do that, you can see at the moment they are really uh, exact and are really kind of unnatural, maybe. But let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to select this uh, plane effector, the fracture object. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to, uh, okay. And let's go ahead and apply a random effector. Let's go ahead and make sure the random effector, it, even though it doesn't matter in this case, I'm just going to put it there. And let's select this fracture, make sure the random is applied before the plane, okay? And then I'm going to this random effector and I'm going to disable the position and I'm just going to randomize the weight of this uh, cube, so maybe something like this, okay? Now if I go ahead and move the uh, falloff, you can see they are going to be 
like this. Nice. Now let's get back here. So about, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to my plane. I kind of want them to be a bit farther away. And also maybe we can apply some sort of rotation, a few degrees, just and maybe something like this. And maybe a bit on Y and maybe a bit on Z something like this maybe is enough and now if I move my plane you see we get this motion perfect nice so let's go ahead and maybe about here it's a good point let's get back to about 135 I think so let's go ahead and I'm um, going to select all of the position values and set a keyframe and maybe go to frame maybe 200 and see maybe here we want to finish them maybe something like this okay and set another keyframe so basically this is what we have hit play and there we go maybe I, I don't know looks a bit unnatural and I guess we can kind of make this thing to be a bit quicker. So let's hit play again. That's much more better. And at the moment it seems a bit unnatural, but when we go to After Effects and start compositing, we're going to be adding motion blur to this data and they're going to be looking much more natural. So no worries at all if I hit play. So this is what we are kind of having. Uh, okay nice so this is uh, it and we're gonna be uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue our design and hopefully uh, finish the whole motion design in a few uh, lesson and then we can start adding more detail and uh, prepare our scene for lighting and rendering so see you in the next lesson